Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the depth map node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and add a depth map node. And what the depth map node does is it creates a, an alpha channel based off the, uh, the perceived distance of objects in the, uh, the image and it'll do it on every single frame. Now up here, you've got the choice of faster or better. We're going to leave it on faster right now, just so it's not so slow because it's pretty slow no matter what you do. And just so you know, this is the exact same depth map that you get in the color tab. If you're using it for color, it's just missing uh, one thing on the bottom in the color tab. You've got a, a extra little tab for blinking, any blinking you've got going on. But it's the same node and does the exact same thing. Up here, you've got whether you want to view the depth map or not. So if you uncheck that, you're not going to actually see the depth map, just the alpha it's creating. If you click that, you'll see the depth map. Just know that if you're connecting this to something right now, there is no, it's actually not an alpha. So when you're, when you have this checked as depth map preview, it's an image. It's actually not an alpha. So before you connect it anywhere to use as an alpha, make sure you uncheck that. So your alpha actually pops through. So we'll go back to the depth map preview. Uh, this button right here will invert it. And down here you have resulting map adjustments. And these controls let you determine how the uh, depth maps contrast is adjusted. So if I select this, you can change your far limits of your depth, your near limits, how bright or uh, dim they are, and you can change the overall gamma. And down here under isolate specific depth lets you control exactly what depth you want to isolate. So if we say want our subject in there, we can use this target depth and sweep back until we get her in there. And again, we want to make sure we have as much pure white alpha on our subject that we want. So. And don't confuse, get confused down here. It'll say alpha 1.0. That's because your whole image is alpha. But if we uncheck this, you notice your alpha down here on the bottom is changing. So you can double check your alphas by mousing over what you want to make sure it's at one. So let's go back. The tolerance will bring it in a little more, basically, uh, minimizing your or widen your depth field so you have to redial it in and same with softness if you start making it softer or harder it's going to change your actual location and you'll have to dial it in and post-processing down here is primarily for uh, anything you're doing when you're using it for grading you can use it for this stuff, but uh, basically what it does is it's going to help get rid of some of that, uh, the odd things that are going on in it and you can smooth it out or bring in that detail. And this will let you contract or expand and this will blur. So how this is used is most commonly People will use it to kind of change their depth of field and stuff. So if we brought in a blur, and let's switch that off so we can see what's going on. You can go to your blur and you can blur according to your depth of field. So if we go back to this, we can invert it. So just everything back there is blurred. You can 
blur it up a little bit, change your depth of field. You can come in here and you can tighten it up a little bit if you want. Change the location of it. But this is kind of boring stuff. You can also bring in, say, a text. And if I type, I don't know, travel. You can take this depth of field, use it as your mask. And you can put that text in behind if you want by changing your your location, your tolerance, and you'll be able to get all your stuff in there. But again, this is typical kind of boring stuff. So what would I use this for? <laughs> I would probably use it for something a little more exciting. Um, let's go ahead and let's get rid of this. Let's refresh. And what I'm going to do is I am going to, every time she takes a step, actually, let me go ahead and get my initial settings in. So we'll get that. I'm going to go to isolation and I'm going to find her. Reduce my tolerance, soften it up a little bit, get it back on her. And I'm gonna bring that in. Maybe something like that. So what I'm gonna do is every time she takes a step, This is where I want my tar target depth. So let's move to her next step. And actually I need to change my target depth because her step is changing. Go right there. Go to her next step. step and her last step just right there and that is good I'll make a keyframe and then what we're going to do is I'm going to go right before each one and I'm going to change the location. I'm going to bring it way back. So now we've kind of got this going on. And I know it doesn't make sense yet, but it will, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna shut this off and I'm going to bring in a drip note. And input our footage. Keyframe the location so it's always on her face. And I'm going 
to change the amplitude a little bit. Frequency. And I'm going to change the phase. Go to keyframe, go to the back. There we go. Then I'm going to take our depth map and input it into Aura Mask. So now when I play it, it's going to play back slow. I've got this pulse wave going from her footsteps. Every time she takes a step, I know it's playing back slow, but it's happening, I promise. There we go. So what next? We're going to take this and merge it into our original footage. And with this, I'm just going to add a multiply mask. Go to this footage and instead of normal, multiply. There we go. Then I'm going to take the same drip node and do the exact same thing. But this time I'm going to add a little blur to it. in there we're going to change our scale so it's small change our contrast up a little bit brightness there we go and we're going to knock our seed weight up there we go and we're going to take the same depth map and input it to our fast noise. So now we've got that. Take one more merge node. We're gonna merge this in. And we're going to change this to color dodge. Go to our settings and bring it down a little bit. Blur it quite a bit. There we go. So I'm not, there's no way I'm going to be able to play this in here. It'll never play. There's way too much going on, and this bitmap is working way too hard. So we're going to go to our uh, edit page and we're going to let it render. So there we go. It's rendered through and I'll give it a playthrough. So it's pretty cool. It's definitely something other than just using it to add a, a lens blur or depth of field changes to an image or adding letters behind something 
the depth map node can be used for all kinds of stuff. So even though this is nowhere near production ready, I would make a lot of changes to this to improve, but it's a start on something cool and different. So if you make anything cool and different with your depth map node, go ahead and uh, drop us a line in the comment section. We'll all go check it out. That is the depth map node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.